What closing the books is all about is preparing the books for next year. The way to think about it is that we're recording revenues and expenses all year long. And what we need to do at the end of the year is we need to zero out those accounts so we could start all over next year. And this is like, you know, like the trip odometer on your car where it shows how many miles you've gone and then you hit the button to zero it out. So like, I don't know about you, every time I fill my tank, I zero out the trip odometer and then I see how many miles I go on the tank. And my car is a little old, so I don't always like to rely on like the... Um, the fuel gauge. So like usually when the fuel gauge says I hit 200, when it says I'm getting close to empty, that may mean I'm running out of gas, but I'm not so sure. So what I also do is I have the tripodometer. The tripodometer shows how many miles I've gone since my last fill up. And when it gets about 250 miles, I fill up with gas. Now I also use that to see my gas mileage, right? Because you can look and see how many miles you went on the last tank, fill it up, see how many gallons you filled it up with, Divide the mileage on your tripodometer by the number of gallons you just put into your tank and then figure out your gas mileage. So that's how we used to do it in the old days before you have the little readout on your you know, dashboard that shows you your gas mileage. Um, the idea, though, is you want to zero out your accounts so you can start all over. Now, some accounts zero out and some do not. The income statement accounts plus dividends all zero out. Because those are things I want to accumulate. On December 31st, I zero out my revenues. And then every time I make a sale, I'm going to add that back to my revenues and accumulate them. Increase them on and on and on all year long. Make more revenues. Revenues goes up. Same thing with expenses. Every time I have an expense, record that expense. So I'm keeping track of all my different expenses during the year. December 31st. Look at your total revenues. Look at your total expenses. Use those to prepare your child balance, adjust the child balance and everything. Prepare your financial statements from that and then zero it out so you can start all over for next year. And that's what we do with revenue and expense accounts because the nature of those accounts is to accumulate. They accumulate all year long till the, year, the last day of the year. Then you do these transact, you do this, go through this process of adjusting entries and closing entries, zero them out, and then start all over the next year. And that's called the close. That's what accountants call. I have a close tonight. You, ever, you know any accountants? And they say, oh, well, I got to work late tonight. We got the close, the close, the month close, the year close, whatever it is. That's what they call it, the close. And the way we do it in accounting is that they don't necessarily do it on December 31st. So what they'll usually do in a real business is they'll usually do it a few days after the end of the month. So most accountants for year end, they'll be working on the year end close for usually a week or two into January. It takes a couple of days. A month end close, usually they do a little less, so they can sometimes do it in a day or two. But that's called the close. Anyway, C-L-O-S-E, close. Um, it involves zeroing out the temporary accounts, the accounts that go on the income statement, revenues, expenses, and dividends. Now, there's other types of accounts, what we call permanent accounts. These are accounts that don't accumulate. They're just there. And those are assets and liabilities. So if I told you, oh, it's year end, let's, let's, let's zero out your cash. Right? You would look at me, why would you zero out your cash? Right? Or let's just erase all the cash and start all over. What I'd like to see is, you know, I once got this email for a debt reducing, a debt erasing tool. It was an email. It wasn't an email. Excuse me. It was, a, I got, it was junk mail I got. A debt erasing tool. So I like want to go to Home Depot and, you know, you just get this tool and you just go ch -ch 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 and erase all of your debts. Isn't that nice? So I'd like to zero out my debts. I know a lot of people would. But... That's not how close, debts are there. And so what do you have to do to get rid of debts? You have to pay them off. What do you do to get rid of cash? You have to spend it. So <laughs> cash, assets, and liabilities stay on your books until you take them off. Which, you know, that you either pay off the liabilities or you get rid of your assets. But revenues and expenses accumulate over time. Gains and losses are the same way. So are dividends. And then at year end, we zero them out. So the process of closing is the process of zeroing out your temporary accounts. 
and these are revenues, expenses, and dividends. If you get a little more advanced in accounting, you'll see it's also gains and losses. So the way I zero out my account, and this is going to be very confusing, so let's just remember what the whole story was with debits and credits again. Remember that Remember that assets, liabilities, expenses, and dividends are debit accounts, and liabilities, stockholders, equity, and revenues are credit accounts. Very, very important fact. Very important thing to know. Assets, expenses, and dividends are debit accounts. Liabilities, stockholders, equity, and revenues are credit accounts. To increase a debit account, you debit it. To decrease the debit account, you credit it. A credit account, to increase a credit account, you got to credit it. To decrease the credit account, you're going to debit it. It took me 10 years to figure it, to be able to say, to increase a credit account, you're going to credit it, and to point to the left. And to decrease a credit account, you're going to debit it, and to point it to the right. Because when you're an accountant, you're trained to think that debits are always on the left and credits are on the right. And there's a lot of jokes. I didn't even tell you the jokes because we had the fire alarm and stuff last time. So I didn't get to tell you all the... Uh, there's a whole rich genre of debit and credit jokes in accounting. But I won't waste your time. Um, anyway, debits, left side, credits, right side. And it's always shown that way, by the way. I've never, I've, I once saw it done the other way for this one spreadsheet that a company was doing. But 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to see debits in a left column, credits in a right column. Because that's how everybody thinks about them. So when we do closing, what we want to do here is you want to reduce the revenues of the expenses down to zero. So if revenues has a credit balance, and you can look back at your adjusted trial balance and see it, if revenues has a credit balance of $20,000, and I want to bring it down to zero, zero it out, hit the trypanometer, I'm going to debit revenues for $20,000. So this is a revenue account. going down. I'm bringing it down to zero. And the difference goes to an account called income summary. Credit income summary for 20000 Income summary, in case you're wondering, is a stockholder's equity account. And it's going to be increased for your revenues. So what you're doing here is you're taking 20000 out of your revenues account and you're going to credit the in income summary. Next thing to do now is to close out my expenses. So I'm going to skip a line here and record all my expenses one by one. The first one I've got is depreciation expense. So I'm going to credit depreciation expense for 300. I'm going to credit insurance expense. These are all my expenses. I'm going to zero them out. Feels good, right? I'm going to credit supply expense for 700 and I'm going to credit um, wage expense for 2000 so total income summary I'm going to debit income summary for the difference that's going to be decreasing stockholders equity that's 4700 let me just check my math 300 500 2000 2700 4700 perfect so each of these is going to be an expense going down to zero Now my income summary should have 20,000 minus 4,700 in it. So 20,000 minus 4,700 is equal to 15,300. Again, the way I got 15,300, I'll just write it down here, is 20,000 minus 4,700 equals 15,300. I'm going to debit income summary for that and I'm going to put 15,300 
into retained earnings because that's where it goes. Remember, retained earnings. Where's what is what is the number here? Fifteen thousand three hundred should look familiar to you, right? What was fifteen thousand three hundred? That's my net income. What I'm doing here is I'm actually putting the net income into retained earnings. Because remember, re income goes into retained earnings. What is retained earnings? Retained earnings is income that was not issued as dividends. So I got 15300 in income. That's got to go into retained earnings. And what comes out of retained earnings? Dividends. So I'm going to take out my dividends right now. Dividends has a native debit balance or a credit balance? Has a debit balance, right? Look back here if you're not sure. <coughs> here it is. Dividends is a debit account. So if I want to reduce dividends down to zero, what am I going to do to it? I'm going to credit it for the $400 dividend. So I'm going to credit dividends for 400 and I'm going to debit the account retained earnings. I'm sorry, I'm going to debit, yeah, I'm going to debit the account retained earnings for 400 because what did dividends come out of? They come out of retained earnings. See what I'm doing here? What I'm doing here is I'm recording. Um, I'm bringing revenues and expenses down to zero. The plug account, the account that I'm putting all the money into is called income summary. Then I put income summary into retained earnings, and I take my dividends out of retained earnings. Now watch the effect of this. Let's go back to our trusty general ledger. Here we go. I'm going to focus now exclusively on the temporary accounts. Those are revenues and expenses. Why do I call them temporary accounts? Because they they get zeroed out every year. So the, in the first transaction, I debited revenue for twenty thousand. And then I credited income summary for twenty thousand. I'm going to make this a color so it's more easy to I'll make it blue then for my expenses let's go over them I credited depreciation expense for 300 where is it up here credited 300 for depreciation expense I credited an insurance expense for 200. I credited rent expense for 1500. That didn't work. <coughs> I credit rent expense for 1500. Credit supply expense for 700. And I credit rate wage expense for two thousand. And the debit, if you remember, look back at the entry, look at back at the journal entry. The debit was the income summary for forty seven hundred. Then I debited income summary for fifteen thousand three hundred. And credited retained earnings for fifteen thousand three hundred. And then last but not least, let me make this a different color. I 
And then last but not least, I closed my dividends. So I credited dividends for 400. And I credited retained, or I debited rather retained earnings for 400. So now what's going on? Let's look at, this is posting the, let's close all these accounts. So these balance sheet accounts I don't have a problem with, but let's go down prepaid insurance I close. Retained earnings should now have a balance of 15,300 minus 400 is 14,900. Dividends is zero. Income summary is zero. Revenue is zero. Depreciation expense, zero. Insurance expense, zero. Rent expense, zero. Supply expense, this is exactly what I want. I'm zeroing out my accounts. Supply expense, zero. Sorry about all the lines here. And wage expense is also zero. So I've done my closing. I've closed out all my revenue and expense accounts. The last thing to do now is what's called the post-closing trial balance, step 10. So go to step 10 and fill all of these amounts into the post-closing trial balance. Try it out right now. Supplies inventory is 500. Equipment is 18,000. Accumulated depreciation is a credit 300 because your assets, your liabilities, Accumulated depreciation, none of these things go away. Prepaid insurance is $2,200, and accounts payable is $1,200. Your common stock is $30,000, and your retained earnings is $14,900, all coming from your T accounts. Dividends has been zeroed. Revenue is zeroed. Depreciation expense, zero. Insurance expense, rent expense, all these things are now zero wage expense zero and then if you add up all your debits 32 you're gonna get 46,400 and debits equal credits